and welcome to another learning moment with me, Dr. Noelle Nchorabo. I'm here to inspire you, equip you, and build your capacity to actualize your fullest potential. Today, we are talking about how to identify passion-driven team members. One of the most common questions I get from my training and coaching sessions is how do I identify the right people at the point of recruitment? How do I identify people who are passion-driven even at the point of selection and recruitment in the hiring funnel? That's a challenge that many HR people struggle with and many employers because at the point of recruitment, at the point of interview, everybody seems to come off as being perfect. Everybody seems to be passion-driven until you hire them and they get into the job and then you re begin to realize all these tendencies and patterns that are contrary to your company culture, that are contrary to the vision and the mission of your organization. So how do you identify the right people, the pa people who are passion-driven at the point of recruitment and selection? I'll share with you four tips uh, of how you can identify passion-driven people at the point of recruitment. <clears throat> For many people, when they think about recruitment, the first place they want to go to is qualifications. The thing about qualifications is that we are living in a time in Uganda, across the African continent, where many people are doing courses because they got a government sponsorship, because that's what their parents want them to do, but it's not a course of choice. So we have a lot of people that are graduating with, you know, uh, first class degrees or even second class upper, but they are not passionate about whatever they studied. They did it to tick a box. They did it to fulfill their parents' wishes, and now they're in the marketplace in regards to competence, they seemingly have it together. However, in regards to passion, they don't have it. So before you go to the competence section, I want you to start with these other four uh, dimensions. So the first place you want to look at is what are their networks or associations? It's a common question we ask when we're recruiting people, what networks or associations are they part of? It's very important to take note of associations they are part of because if I am passionate about something, if you're passionate about something, that tendency is for you to find spaces, platforms, communities of like-minded people where you can continue to nurture your talent, your ability, so you grow in that area. So it would be... Um, it would be strange if somebody said they are passionate about something and they are not in any network, any community, any association of like-minded people because that would be your first red flag to realize that probably this is something they studied, this is something they learned, but they are not passionate about it. The second thing you want to look at is what has been their voluntary experience. You and I know that if you're passionate about something, you'll even be willing to volunteer. You'll be willing to put in the extra time without being paid because it's something you love. You derive a lot of fulfillment just doing this thing. So I'd like to know what has been someone's volunteer experience. And when you talk about volunteer experience, I don't want you to look at their mandatory internship. Like in Uganda, universities require students to take an internship. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about everything they've done out of their formal academic arrangement, be it in their child or their religious institutions, their community, their primary schools, their village, what have they voluntarily done? That could be an indicator of what they're truly passionate about. If their volunteer experience does not point in the direction of the things that you're pursuing as a company or an organization, that might be a red flag for you. The third thing that you want to think about uh, in identifying whether this person is passionate at the point of uh, recruitment is thinking about their ambitions and aspirations. Where do they see themselves in the next five or 10 years? The reason why we misfire on this question is that we tend to ask with a perspective of professional development. At that point, it's easy for somebody to wave it, to tell you what you want to hear and assume they are going to be in a uh, your company for a much longer time. However, I like to ask that question from a very generic perspective. What are your life aspirations? What do you want to achieve in your life? What are you ambitious about? Listening to what their dreams are, listening to what their future looks like. I can tell whether they are aligned with where we want to go or they are not aligned with where we want to go because it's very important for you to get people that are deeply aligned with your vision and mission. The more deeply aligned they are, the chances of them staying longer are higher. So you want to know where do they want to go? What are the courses they want to study? If somebody wants to go for further studies in the next one year and what they're going to study, maybe their master's or their PhD, is so contrary to the path of passion that you are looking for in your company, that is a red flag. They are telling you something. 
they're telling you something in terms of I am I may not be here for a long time. This is only a stepping stone to my next level because whatever their aspirations are, that is a window into what they truly care about. So ask about their life aspirations. What are the things they hope to achieve in their lifetime? The fourth place you want to look at is what are their initiatives? Have they been part of any initiative? Maybe started an organization, started a campaign, started a foundation, took part in something that uh, is in line with a passion. Because again, a passion-driven person is always looking for expression and outlets and, and uh, communities where they can be part of the things that they truly care about. So what initiatives have they been part of? Did they start a club? Did they start an organization? And it doesn't matter whether that initiative is still standing. It doesn't matter whether that initiative is being successful or not. The point is they were part of a founding team of something that is deeply aligned with what you are looking for as a company. So four things you can do to identify passion driven team members at the point of recruitment is one begin to look back into uh, their networks and associations. What communities are they part of? Are they communities that align with the things you do? Because if they're not, then there's going to be a mismatch. <clears throat> Secondly, you want to look at their volunteer experience. Where have they volunteered in the past? That could be an indicator of what they truly care about. Three, what are their life ambitions? Where do they want to go? And does that align with the vision and mission of your organization? And fourth, have they been part of an initiative that is in alignment with the mission or the passion that you are looking for in that particular position to fill in your company? When it comes to recruitment, you want to look at, I personally would suggest that you go for 70% passion and 30% competence. What I'm saying, if you find a person that has 70% passion, their passion uh, alignment is at 70% and their competence is at 30%, I would take a bet on that person, especially if it's a junior position. Because if they are passionate about it, they're going to be more willing to learn. They're going to be more willing to push themselves to become better in that thing. However, if you do find somebody that has 70% competence and 30% passion, it might be a hard thing because they might not be willing to invest more time to in becoming better in growing themselves in this area because it's not something that they're deeply passionate about so competence is a great thing if you can find more competence and more passion the better however if you do take on someone that is not uh passionate about whatever you're doing it's just a matter of time and they'll be out looking for another opportunity however if somebody is deeply passionate about what you're doing and they align with your organizational culture the chances of them staying longer are very high if you are in the recruitment space i hope these tips have been beneficial for you i would like to hear your reflections and feedback in the comments and until next time i'm dr noelin chirabo have a blessed day and a blessed week